Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be giving you a comparison and review of Horizons Math Level 4 in comparison to Saxon Math 504. My name is Morgan. If this is your first time, welcome. I am a homeschool mom to three girls and we are starting our sixth and a half year of homeschooling. I just had my now fifth grader has finished Horizons Level 4 and then my sixth grader finished Saxon Math 5-4 two years ago. So I thought I would give you guys a comparison. There is always really big talk about the comparison of Horizons Math and Saxon Math. I am in both groups on Facebook and there's always this thing of when do you switch from Horizons Math to Saxon's Math or is Horizons better for the younger years and Saxon better for the older years? There's just so much that goes on in those groups about these curricula. So I thought, why not just have me get on here and share with you guys my thoughts? I do have a flip through of 5.4 and I'm gonna link it down below because I'm not gonna do a flip through of either of these curriculum. I'm gonna tell you what we've experienced with it, um, just some facts about both of them. But if you stick around, I'm gonna be sharing a flip through of Horizons Level 5, which is very similar to Level 4. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that flip through also. So I guess I'll start with Saxon Math. When you get Saxon Math, as I said in the flip through, it has all the details, but you're gonna get the teacher's book. It has your lessons in it. You're going to get the test and additional worksheet. Then you will get your uh, solutions manual. Same thing with Horizons. You're gonna get a teacher's manual and then you're going to get book number one and then you will get book number two. That is across the board for both of them. Now, in the Horizons, it's set up definitely a lot different from Saxon Math. But some things about Saxon Math, it's a little confusing because you have like Saxon 5-4 and then you go up to, list, what is it, 6-5 and then 7-6 and 8-7. Who is this for? 5-4, this is for an on-level fourth grader or a fifth grader who needs review. That is what 5-4 is for. So when you go up to 6-5, on level fifth grader or a sixth grader who needs review. That is across the board when you're dealing with Saxon math and the different numbers that are related. Both of these curricula are spiral curricula, guys. They are spiral, but they do it a little differently. I will say that Saxon math does the spiral and they focus more on the new concept. They still go back to previous concepts, but a majority of the concepts will be from the new lesson. With each lesson in Saxon, you're gonna have a warm up. You will have mental math. You will then have your lesson and then the lesson practice, and then you go into your mixed practice. The mixed practice is anywhere from 25 to 30 questions as you progress through the book. With Horizons Level 4, it's more teacher intensive. You're going to be needed for this when your child, and it is set up for you to teach your child the lessons, do some practice on that lesson, and then your child will go off and do the lesson by themselves. I have not had to do a ton of that with my daughter. She is great at math. She understands a lot of concepts. And so that's not been the case for us, but I do enjoy being able to use manipulatives. And Horizons Math gives you an opportunity to use manipulatives to help give your child the instruction for each lesson. So the format for Horizons is they simply get the lesson instruction from you and then they go into the lessons. There is a small box for lesson instruction and then they go right into it. Their questions can be deceiving because it will have question number one, but there may be seven or eight problems that you need to answer under question one. And it may go one through five. There's also a lot of like fun activities within the student workbook. And my daughter has worked through this. As I said, we completed it, but there's a lot of different activities like crossword puzzles and different coloring activities that they would do, riddles that they would have to figure out. There is also scripture within the Horizons Math curriculum. There's a scripture usually on the teacher's page, and then some of the activities here will use a scripture reference within them for your child. It's not every single lesson, but it is definitely present within the curriculum. There's no warm up with this one. So no math facts warm up, no mental math practice, um, no lesson practice before they actually get into the lesson. It may have one question as it's going through the lesson for your child to work through, but they get a majority of their practice from the teacher's instruction 
and it shares with you that's not the page <laughs> from the teacher's instruction and it shares with you what it is that your child should work on and how you walk through the lessons with them and different materials that you would need for the curriculum now let's talk about the spiral bound this is a spiral not spiral bound <laughs> <laughs> the spiral method this is a spiral curriculum in that it goes over the same topics multiple times throughout the school year this one focuses more on review so when we start a new lesson and get a new concept you may have one section that is the new concept everything else will be from previous concepts and I have my own feelings about that we definitely have picked the right curricula for our daughters this would not work for my oldest daughter and Saxon would not work for my middle daughter. It just wouldn't work for either of them. So I appreciate the approach for both of them, which is how we ended up with two separate curricula because I'm searching for what my girls need and what's best for them. Both of these curricula have additional worksheets. So if your child is struggling in a specific area, there are additional worksheets in the back of each of these books for your child to be able to work on. And it tells you what lesson it corresponds with. Some things that I do really enjoy about Saxon is that within every lesson, when you do the mixed practice, it tells you what lesson every single question came from. So you don't have to flip through the book and guess where that concept was first introduced. It's going to tell you. Horizons Math does not do that, which made it a little challenging when my daughter missed a concept. We had to go to the table of contents to really see where we could find that or we just had to flip through the pages to see where that concept was introduced and my daughter was pretty good about remembering oh this was around lesson 15 or whatever the case may be but i would love to have had that here other cons that i found about horizons 4 is that the writing space within the student booklet is small y'all she had to use a math notebook to be able to work the problems out which is fine because i want my girls to be able to work them out but there are no additional sheets that come along with the curricula for your child to be able to work it out and there's not enough space within this book i wish i could show you guys but as i said before make sure you stick around and subscribe because i'm going to do a flip through of horizons 5 and it's the same format with saxon's math you're going to get additional worksheets you're going to get worksheets for your child to work out the mixed practice there are also what's called investigations this is an opportunity for your child to have hands-on experience with what's going on so may they do measurements in different shapes and figuring those out protractor work all of those things where they get to put their hands on things there are 12 investigations within here and then there are 23 tests you have a test after every five lessons starting with lesson number 10. this is a good curriculum as far as space for writing which my oldest daughter enjoys having that now if your child is looking for color they're not going to get it in saxon <laughs> it's all black and white or tan color pages Horizons, not the teacher's manual, but the student booklets have lots of color in them. They're really kind of like fun and exciting to look at. This is perfect for my middle daughter. She enjoys doing those little activities in there and still incorporating math in a fun way for her, even though she's going into fifth grade and Horizons level five does the same thing. Both of these have a very heavy in the beginning review. And when I mean heavy review in that the first 40 to 50 lessons in both of these curricula is review. How are we approaching that every year? My girls test out of it. So what I simply have them do is they will review the test, they will take the test. If they get anything less than an 85, that is where we start the lessons. So far, they are both testing into, my oldest daughter is starting 7-6 and she is on test number three. She's been doing amazing, is getting 100 on all of them she has so far. And then my daughter is also testing into Horizons 5 and she has gotten 100s on all of her tests so far as well. I'm guessing we will end up starting around that 45 lesson time frame with both of them. Also, Horizons has more lessons within it. There were 160 lessons. There are 15 or 16 tests and then there are four quarter tests and a final, which totals out to 181 days of work. Now, if we're able to start her at lessons 40 to 50, that cuts out a big majority of that, but there's no wiggle room for you to miss if you are required to do 180 days, this will cover you for 180 days. Saxon Math is 120 lessons. There are 12 investigations 
and there are 23 tests. I did not do my math on that, but that is roughly about 155, maybe 156 as far as lessons and instruction. That does leave opportunities for you to dive into some of the worksheets in the back if your child needs a little bit more help in those areas. That leaves additional days within the year to dive into worksheets. We do not touch worksheets typically until the end of the year, or if I see a major struggle in a specific area, we will stop where we are and we will add in supplemental work, which is what I consider the worksheets to be in the back, or I will grab supplemental work from a different book. However, we've not had that problem. My girls have done really well with both of their math curricula over the years. Your Saxon math lesson teaching is going to be a lot longer than your Horizons math lesson teaching if you're not going through the additional teaching that it wants you to do as the teacher for your child. You may find that your child doesn't need help with that and that's kind of what we did with the majority of it. So I would still give her the manipulatives and kind of say, hey, you can use these to go through the problems this way and it just shortened it up drastically. The days that we did go through full teacher instruction it probably took me about 15 to 20 minutes to get through the instruction with her and then she went off to do the lessons. In cost, they are about the same. You're going to spend over $100 brand new for both of these curricula. Whether that's on Amazon, on their websites, christianbooks.com, wherever you get your curriculum, I have seen the prices about the same. So if you can, check out used and see what you can do. Now, I wouldn't sell this to anybody <laughs> because they have definitely been used and abused in our home, but you can definitely find some great used curriculum out there. Some other things that people have mentioned in the groups, as I said before, is when to switch. I have had my daughter on Saxon Math. 5-4 was the first lesson or the first book that she started with. My middle daughter just started Horizons Math for the first time last year as a fourth grader. Some people suggest that you allow your child to do Horizons Math up until third grade, and then you switch them to Saxon 5-4 when they hit fourth grade. Other people say they take Horizons Math all the way up to eighth grade because it does go up to Algebra 1, and then they switch their child over to Saxon Math high school level. There are some people who don't use Saxon Math from K through three because there is a different um, writer of that curricula, However, we are using Saxon 1, we use Saxon K with my youngest daughter, and she is going through that and doing really well. So it pretty much sounds like it is a matter of personal preference. There are concepts that were taught in Horizons 4 that my daughter, who was going through Saxon 6, 5, had not touched on quite as much. And that may be due to the fact that this is, it's a rigorous curriculum. I feel like there are areas where it's a little bit further ahead than the Saxon Math 5-4, but it gets introduced in Saxon 6-5. So that can be really confusing too, having your children on two different grade levels, but they're working on the same math because that's just how the curricula flow. Some of the concepts in these curricula are taught just a little bit differently. And it was a little hard for me to kind of figure that out and not confuse one or the other of my daughters. Although I believe that in math, we definitely should learn multiple ways to solve problems. I am all about all the different and variations of math and how it can be taught. As long as they get to the end result, I think it's great to be able to learn different methods. And these two curricula definitely do it differently. There's just a difference in how the information is presented. And I really noticed that when we got to fractions, adding and subtracting fractions. And it still is a thing now. My oldest daughter is like, I learned it from Saxon this way. And my middle daughter's like, no, Horizons taught me this way. They are getting the same answers, but it's two different ways that they learned how to do those problems, which I think is amazing. So with that, I will say that both of these curricula have suited my daughters very well for their specific needs. And they are both really solid math curricula.